Today it's time to look at some ongoing rumours currently in the F1 driver market. And the two rumours I picked out today that we're going to talk about are quite big. For example, will Sebastian Vettel retire at the end of 2019? And could Nico Hülkenberg be joining Red Bull very soon? Well, in today's video, I'm going to look at these rumours and try to analyse if they actually could happen and give my reasons to why I think they may or may not happen. So if you want to know if these rumours could become true, make sure to check out this video. So let's first get into the Sebastian Vettel retire rumour. Now, in my opinion, Sebastian Vettel is definitely not going to retire at the end of 2019. And now I'm going to explain exactly why I think so. So one of the many reasons why I don't believe this is going to happen is because Sebastian Vettel cares dearly about his reputation and his legacy within Formula 1. For example, he cares a lot about stats and how he goes down in terms of how he's going to be remembered when it comes to pole positions, race wins, fastest laps and of course, world championships. For example, if you go back to his Red Bull days, he was at times obsessed with getting fastest laps alongside pole positions and race wins because he does care very, very dearly about stats and how he will be remembered in years to come. And Sebastian Vettel, I can guarantee you, does not want to go out on what has been so far and what will most likely be quite a mediocre 2019 and mediocre season for not only Sebastian's standards, but also Ferrari. So I don't see why Vettel would go out on such a disappointing season when Say if next season Ferrari do get their act together and Sebastian can improve his form once again, why would he not go out on a high next year if that possibly can happen rather than retire after 2019, which, let's be honest, has been mostly a disaster. And I also kind of believe that Sebastian is desperate to win five world championships and with him being only one world championship away, if he gets that pretty soon, then I think he could definitely retire after that. But with the four championships he has so far, even though that is a great achievement, his last world championship was quite a long time ago. And I think he's very keen to win at least one more, which is why earlier I said Sebastian does care very deeply about how he will be remembered after he retires from Formula One. Another reason for me is that Sebastian still desperately wants success with Ferrari because he has, ever since 2015, been pushing so hard to try and win a world championship with this team. Of course, in 2017 and 2018, came very close, but failed through his own mistakes, but also the team's errors. Now, even though... It seems as though at the moment Ferrari and Vettel may have missed their chance in terms of claiming a world championship. It's not an absolute certainty that Vettel can't win with Ferrari. You never know. In 2020, Ferrari may improve. In 2021, Ferrari may have the best car if they really do design their team well for that new set of regulations and get the car right for that new era of Formula 1. So you can't say yet that the boat has completely sailed on Ferrari and Vettel winning together in terms of winning a world championship. And I don't think Sebastian would have wasted so many years of his career if he didn't think that he could win with Ferrari. And also, let's not forget his idol, his hero, Michael Schumacher, of course, was very successful with Ferrari. And I think Sebastian is also desperate to emulate Michael in winning with Ferrari. But the final reason for me why Sebastian won't retire is more say from the team's point of view, and that's that in 2019, Sebastian has been Ferrari's best driver. So from a team point of view, they will be desperate to keep a hold of Sebastian Vettel because he has been clearly better than Charles Leclerc in 2019. And I think Sebastian this season, despite the two big errors in Bahrain and Canada, which did cost him, I think he has been pretty good this season, especially in qualifying in doing the best he can do 
with that Ferrari car because you have to remember that the 2019 Ferrari is not a good car. It's not a car that can consistently go for pole positions or race wins like it could in 2018 or even 2017. So I think what Sebastian has been doing has been good enough and has definitely on a consistent basis been better than Charles Leclerc who has been rather inconsistent compared to Vettel in 2019. And based on how the season has gone so far, why would Ferrari put all their eggs into the Charles Leclerc basket if Charles Leclerc has not really been better than Vettel that much during 2019? Now, of course, Leclerc was very, very good in Bahrain and his speed in Baku was very good despite the crash. But again, on a consistent basis, he has not been better than Sebastian Vettel. So they have to keep Vettel at Ferrari because if Leclerc say in 2020 and for the rest of 2019 continues to be at times quick but at times makes say simple mistakes then they can't get rid of Vettel and put everything on Leclerc who might not even be ready yet to lead a team forward like Ferrari and I think again considering how Sebastian has done this season in that Ferrari car it would be absurd to get rid of him considering that he has been pretty good for most of the time yes i know he's still not at his absolute best and he can definitely be better but you can't really fault him that much for what he's done in 2019 so for me that's why the vettel retirement rumor is not true in my opinion but i will say in terms of him leaving ferrari I definitely think that's a lot more possible at the end of 2020 because, of course, his contract is up at the end of 2020. And I do expect a lot of moves in the driver market going into 2021. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sebastian did leave Ferrari at the end of 2020. But I don't see Sebastian retiring for, say, at least another three or four years. Because despite him not being as good as he once was, he still has a lot more to give in Formula 1. And honestly, considering that he still does have a lot more to give, it would be a shame to see him retire at the end of this season. So for me, this is not true. But now let's get on to the Nico Hülkenberg to Red Bull story. And this story became very popular after the Monaco Grand Prix going into the Canadian Grand Prix. But for me also, this rumour is not true, and I'm going to explain why now. For one, why would Red Bull, when it comes to possibly replacing Pierre Gasly, why would they go away from their driver academy system, which has been so successful for them ever since they came into Formula 1 as a team? Because just look at the drivers they have produced, such as Sebastian Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen, but also drivers like Sebastian Buemi, Sebastian Bourdais, John eric Verne, even Danny Kvyat, and even Carlos Sainz. That is a lot of very good drivers that have come through that system in just 10 years. And I don't see why Red Bull should break that system of picking drivers from their academy to go into the head Red Bull team. I don't see why they should break that system to go for a driver that, to be honest, isn't that great. Nico Hülkenberg is a good driver, but he's definitely not a driver you break your system for. He's not exactly Fernando Alonso or Lewis Hamilton. He is basically just a midfield driver. Now, he would be a better replacement for Daniel Ricciardo at Red Bull than Pierre Gasly, but he wouldn't be, in the long term, a real improvement going forward. And I just don't see again why you would break the system of picking academy drivers for the Red Bull team for a driver like Nico Hülkenberg. And also, to be honest, if you look at 2019, Hülkenberg hasn't actually been that good and I don't really think deserves to be in a Red Bull for 2020 based off what he's done so far in 2019. I mean, in Australia and Bahrain, yes, granted, he was very good beating Ricardo and being better than Ricardo in both of those weekends. But ever since China, Hülkenberg has consistently been slower 
and especially in Baku, Barcelona and Monaco, Hulkenberg was actually quite poor. I know in Baku, for example, the Renault was poor, but in, for example, Barcelona, he definitely could have done better and also could have done better at Monaco. In Canada, he was good, but again, was not as good as Daniel Ricciardo. And when it comes to not being as good as Daniel Ricciardo, why would Red Bull select Hulkenberg when it's been proven so far that Ricciardo is the better driver? Because in the long term, when it comes to that number two seat at Red Bull, alongside Max Verstappen, they need to find someone in the long term who is going to be at least as good as Ricciardo, if not better. And Nico Hülkenberg is certainly not that person. So for me, this story is just complete rubbish. I don't see how this can possibly happen, honestly, in a million years. I think there is absolutely no chance of this happening. There is honestly more chance of them bringing Mark Webber out of retirement than Nico Hülkenberg going to Red Bull. That is how little a chance I'd give this rumour actually being true. But instead of just having my opinion when it comes to Nico Hülkenberg to Red Bull, now let's include a different point of view and go to the F1 debate show to hear their thoughts on whether this could happen. So I'll let Jordan now take it away. So my thoughts on Nico Hülkenberg possibly going to Red Bull Racing in 2020. Now this is something I wouldn't really thought uh, I would be talking about uh, coming into this season. You know, it's a bit of a random claim. I think these claims were, were made pro probably because um, I think in Monaco, Hultenberg was seen talking to some representatives of Red Bull and that's what's caused all this. But it's, it is something worth definitely talking about. And I think it's something that we shouldn't really shy away from um, if you want to talk about, you know, drive rumours. I mean, look what happened last season. There were so many shocks uh, th uh, throughout the course from, I think, from about yeah, Belgium till about the end of the season. There was just so many random and weird, well, I wouldn't say random, but so many surprising and shocking driver transfers. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if these, if this season went that way. But before I jump into my opinions, I just want to say thank you very much for, for Chazza for having us on uh, this week. Um, he came he came onto our channel about, I think it was about a week before the season started, back in March. So you know, it's just, it's you know, it's nice to be on his channel. And if you are new to his channel, then please subscribe to his channel. Very very good, uh, working channel that he's got going. He does like live uh, reactions uh, during the races. He does some tech analysis videos, his own opinions as well. He just dropped a video recently uh, about why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull Racing. A very good watch if you do like that kind of thing as well. So. You know, please subscribe to his channel. Um, you will love everything that he does. Uh, and he knows a lot. He knows a lot about Formula One more, more so than what I do myself. But anyways, so Nico Hultenberg to Red Bull. Um, my opinion would be no. I don't think he will. Just to jump into it there. I don't think he'll go to Red Bull. Now, one of the reasons is is because I think we need to give Pierre Gasly a chance, right? Now, I know Chazza has his own opinions about Pierre Gasly, which I respect. Um, and he hasn't had he hasn't exactly set the world on fire, has he? At, at, at Red Bull, bearing in mind that a lot of people expected him to. Um, you know, he's he's miles away from Max Verstappen's pace. He's not with one with the car. He has some very disappointing results. He's you know he's he, I think Hülkenberg's closer to the podium than uh, Pierre Gasly is at the moment, which is you know which is quite surprising. Um, and he does need to do more without a shadow of a doubt. He does need to improve. Uh, his performances and and you know and this kind of thing is what happens when you don't have those good performances you know you start um getting questioned about your seat about you know stuff like that where possible possible drivers could be coming in to replace you and this is one of those kind of things and it's been linked with a move away from red bull you know since pre-season so that just you know that just pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about Pierre Gasly's season so far. Testing didn't go well, uh, but Chazza does, uh, does cover more or less Pierre Gasly's season uh, in that video I was telling you about just before. Um, but I think you, you do need to give Pierre Gasly a chance. You know, it's only been seven races. Um, he's still young. Red Bull didn't want him in this season. They wanted him next season, possibly. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo shock exit from Red Bull to Renault um, kind of forced them more or less to, to bring Pierre Gasly to Red Bull because they were very limited of options. You know, the dried their driver academy up um, and Danny Kivat had just signed with Toro Rosso 
and there was pretty much nobody else left unless they brought someone back from Red Bull, uh, from their old driver program, like what they've been doing. For example, Carlos Sainz, possibly, you know, him coming back. Um, Alex, uh, Alex Lynn, I think, was one of those uh, drivers I was like, he's the only one I've, I've noticed that he hasn't even been, he, he hasn't come back yet. Um, but yeah, so anyways, yeah, so um, obviously he's in Formula E now, I believe, or he was. Um, so so obviously they were they were a bit, they were a bit, bit short of numbers for when Pierre, when Pierre Gasly come in. So as like I said, he's not doing well at the moment. So it is coming like right, you know, his seat is under pressure. But one of the other reasons why I believe Hultenberg won't go to Red Bull is because that they'll be looking at Toro Russell because so far those two drivers are doing really really well this season. Danny Kvyat, Alexander Albon. I'm gonna talk about Alexander Albon uh, just uh, just now, um, and he's you know he's he's doing pretty well. He's for his debut season, he's pretty standard, but he's also being linked with that Red Bull seat. And personally, I don't think that they should go with Alexander Albon. Now, the reason I say this is because that you you now be in the same position as what you are in right now. Albon isn't ready for that Red Bull seat at all. I don't think Pierre Gasly was as well. Um, and you know, having that jump again, that you know, f from Albon to go from Toro Rosso to Red Bull that quickly, it just won't work. And then that'll be another one out the door, you know, another one demoted back to Toro Rosso, another one in the driver academy gone or whatever. And it's yeah, it will just ruin his career basically. And all this hype around Alexander Albon will be for nothing. So for me, Albon is a no go. I know people are getting excited, and I think yes, he is a good driver, but as like I said, no way. Danny Kvyat deserves another chance, without a shadow of a doubt. What a torrid time he has had at Red Bull Racing. You know, one season of Toro Rosso. You know, prime example for, for what, what I said before about uh, Alexander Albon not going to uh, not going to Red Bull. Well, look what happened to Danny Kvyat. All right, he had a season and a half. He did a pretty solid job, but at the same time, he did make some silly mistakes, and it resulted him in you know being demoted. And I think if Verstappen wasn't in, wasn't in the fold. Kvyat would have stayed, but he also would have been heavily criticised for some of his driving. And I think that, as like I said, that the exact same will happen with Alexander Albon. And um, so it was with Toro Rosso a year and a half. Went, went to Toro Rosso, uh, went back to Toro Rosso for, for 2016. Then for 2017, he got removed after, what was it, Singapore, I think was his last race. But then he came in for, for I think it was the US Grand Prix when uh, uh, Gasly was uh, in Super GT, I think, at the time. So he came in for for a, a race there, and then he scored a point in that Grand Prix, and um, that was his last point he scored that season, or, his, or I believe it was anyway, because he you know he drove his heart out, you know he he could have easily you know got a seat because of that, um and yeah so he, now he went to Ferrari for a season, he came back and he's doing really really well, in terms of stats or scores against teammates, I think Kvyat leads, is it six one in the race in five two in qualifying I believe. Um, so again, that's that's pretty solid numbers. Um, all right, Albon's a rookie, but still, you know, look what happened to, to what to what when Lewis came into Formula One. All right, it was a different time, but you know, it, just an example. You know, the rookies just because he's a rookie doesn't mean to say that he's gonna he's not gonna be good. He's not gonna like challenge your teammate. You, you know, so I, you know I believe that you know Kvyat is doing a really solid job this season. But again, you shouldn't really rush on Daniel Kvyat either because. You know, again, we're, just, we're, we're hyping over him. Yes, he's doing a solid job, but he, he you know, he's got to be ready to be able to go back into that pressure of Red Bull again. It would be, yeah, it would be brilliant. But again, let's just let's just calm it down. Let's, as like I said, please give Pierre Gasly a second season, give Danny Kvyat another season at Toro Rosso for him to cement his place in Formula One. You know, see what he can do for another season, and then pretty much. Um, and then you know yes, and then then review it after the second season, or even through halfway through his second season. This is kind of turned into like a a, tr like a a completely off the topic I'm supposed to be talking about, but yeah, I do kind of like you know drift off the path. Um, so as like I said, so my personal opinion would be no, Hultenberg wouldn't really go to Red Bull, um, because of the reason I just explained. I think realistically, Kvyat would be a good option, but I think they really should stick with with Pierre Gasly, in my opinion, anyways, for at least two seasons going into the future with Honda it's still relatively new the partnership um, and you know Red Bull aren't exactly challenged for championships they're, they're in no man's land like they're not they're not as quick as the top two but they're not as slow as the rest of the midfield so it's like right so they're in like no man's land so really they're in the position where they can have a test year and as like I said Red Bull didn't want them in this season so let's 
wait for the season where they wanted him in and let's see how he does because next season he could improve. So let's just, let, I think let's just wait for Pierre Gasly. Let's give him a chance. But let's say, right, that Huttenberg does go to Red Bull and he replaces Pierre Gasly. Would I be disappointed? Absolutely not. I do believe, right, at this moment in time, Nico Huttenberg will do a better job than Pierre Gasly. I don't mean because of speed, I mean because of experience. Huttenberg has been in the sport for, what, nine, ten seasons now? And he's doing, he's doing all right. We call him Mr. Nearly Man because he's nearly been on the podium. Fourth place finishes about six, seven times. He's 31 year old and he's, he's getting on a bit, right? He needs a chance at a big team, all right? His former teammate, uh, Checo, uh, I was going to say Perez Checo there for some reason, uh, Sergio Perez Checo, uh, had a shot on McLaren. It didn't really work. He was linked with Ferrari at this point. That could have worked, possibly. Uh, or even even a year at Ferrari as a test driver. Look what it did for Massa. It did it did you know did him did him good. Um, I would say that was more McLaren's fault than Sergio's because I think I do rate Sergio Perez. I think he's a good driver. Um, so you know Perez got a couple of podiums. Hultenberg didn't. That's something that Hultenberg is missing. You know he's had what well, he's had the most no, most Grand Prix start without a podium. It's pretty like embarrassing. Well, it's not embarrassing, but it's like it's it's a record you don't want to have. Um, and he's a driver that is well liked, you know, not a lot of people would say that they dislike him. I like him, I'm pretty sure you guys do too. Um, unless you're a Kevin Magnussen fan that is, and then therefore, because there's a bit of rivalry there, but anyways, that's for another video. Um, so, yeah, I think I think Huttenberg deserves a chance, without, without a doubt. Out of anyone on the grid, I believe he does deserve a chance at a top team, see what he can do. I believe he's got the speed, he's got the experience. I think he'll take the fight to Max Verstappen without a shadow of a doubt. I think Verstappen will still be faster. But I think Huttenberg could do a better job than Gasly at the moment. But as like I said, please give Pierre Gasly a chance. So yes, so just to review what I've just said, my overall opinion. Do I believe Huttenberg will go to Red Bull? No. But if he does, I think he does deserve it. It's not a realistic, it's not an unrealistic aim. I think if Red Bull are after him, I think, all right, credit, go, you know, go and get him, son. And it does kind of prove that they have screwed over their driver academy just a bit. But yes, that is my opinions on uh, Nick Altenberg to Red Bull. Let us know your opinions in the comment section below and enjoy the rest of the video and thank you very much for watching my segment. So there you go, that's their thoughts on Hulkenberg to Red Bull and also I just want to thank him for coming on for this video and doing this collaboration and it's great also to have a different point of view on the channel because at the end of the day this is what this channel is about. It's about opinions and sharing our different opinions and at times having disagreement when it comes to your opinions. So great to have him on. If you have not checked out the F1 Debate Show channel, make sure in the description and on the pinned comment to go and look at their channel and look at the latest video and also subscribe to their channel. But honestly, when it comes to these two rumors, I do not see them happening at all. Of course, it'd be very interesting if it did, but realistically, guys, don't expect these stories to actually come true but anyway guys that has been it for this video make sure to comment down below whether you agree or disagree with the opinions in this video and also don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more content like this my next video will be at 12 p.m uk time on thursday again make sure to check out the f1 debate show the links are down below but guys until next time it has been me chaser hd goodbye